There's two people inside of you, inside of everyone. There's also two choices in life, two paths, two outcomes, which when you realize depends on the person you listen to. You could choose to listen to your smaller self, the self that's afraid of everything, the one that thinks that living is a threat to life and that shouts at you daily inside of your head to keep your attention and get you to do what it wants. You're not good enough. You're too dumb and lazy to find a way through. Success is for other people, not for you. You can never be that you're not talented enough. Wanting money and recognition is selfish and self-absorbed. Or you could choose to listen to your true self, the one that patiently waits for you to realize your power and worth, the one that is always there to counsel you and provide you with solace, though you may not acknowledge it, who will give you advice and guide you through when you decide that you want a better life for yourself and urge you to realize that you deserve better simply because you are. This is the voice of love, the voice of truth. Instead of shouting to get your attention, it prefers to be soft-spoken. You have unique and valuable gifts to share with the world. You're more than capable to succeed. Success is already yours. Abundance is your birthright and your desires, your guides. You're worthy of more because you exist you matter. You are loved and loving. Many of the battles we face in life are a struggle between these two. The first voice is a function of our biology and our environment, our nature and nurture. It's the societal pressures that we're submitted to that begin shaping our lives even before we're born. These pressures continue throughout our lives and eventually compound into what we call our identity. More than that, though, they affect our inner dialogue. Left unchecked, we'll pretty soon be taken out of the present moment, out of the simple enjoyment of being alive, and be swept into a whirlwind of limiting beliefs that oftentimes we won't even be able to identify, much less their roots. Rafael Lopez, a psychiatrist I mentioned in one of my other videos, calls this el imaginario, or the imagined one. But although imagined, the illusion is a strong one. What at first starts as a tiny voice pretty soon develops into a full-blown presence that takes up permanent resonance in our heads and bodies and begins having very real influence on what we think, feel, and do. If you don't make yourself aware of this presence, it'll run your whole life. As Carl Jung says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. This voice is an internalized version of all the critiques you've received throughout your life and all the ones you can imagine receiving in the future. Therefore, this voice will always have something to say about you and anything you do. It will present itself as the voice of reason, but it really only ever focuses on the negatives. Given enough time, this voice will ruin your life. The upside is that it has no power of its own. It relies on yours. But while this rule might seem simple enough, it's actually pretty hard to follow. Because even if you don't actively do so, by not realizing your own power, your own greatness, you relinquish it. By playing small, you allow this presence to grow big. By playing small, you allow yourself to become dependent on it. You'll start thinking that your happiness and success can only come to fruition if you keep listening to it. You'll begin developing Stockholm Syndrome and start seeing it as a positive force in your life. You'll begin believing that it's only there to protect you and that you would suffer deep hurt, shame, and embarrassment if you didn't pay it any mind. You'll even start thinking that it's necessary to live in this world and that other people would walk all over you without it to defend you. You'll begin telling yourself that your life will be better if you just listen to it and do what it says. It sells you on the promise of happiness through conformity, but the price is your individuality, your power, and true self-confidence. This voice is the ego, and it will continue to be a part of your life, even if you gain and develop mastery over your mind, because that's precisely where it lives. It and ego are inextricable. 
As long as you interact with life through mind, the ego will continue to exist. So, working on thinking better thoughts, though helpful on the surface, will just lead to an endless leap to audit and fix your thoughts. This path is a tiring one, as it requires you to be ever vigilant and to never let your guard down. Only by learning to step out of the mind can you ensure constant, effortless peace. By stepping out of the mind, you become the observer. It allows you to stop engaging with your thoughts completely, if you so choose, as it gives rise to space between you, the consciousness, and your thoughts, quote unquote. One of the yoga teachers I follow on YouTube explained this really well in one of her shorts. I'm not sure if explaining it in this way was her original idea or not, but I'll insert a clip of it here. Picture that this circle of light is you, and it's your mind. Everything around the circle is the field of all that is. You can call this by any name you wish to call it. In yoga, we understand Step out of the mind and you'll step into your true self, into expansiveness, into presence, into the field of all that is. You'll realize that as long as you're outside of the mind, there really are no problems in life because the things that we perceive as problems are really just things that threaten the ego and its need to always be in control. Since the ego lives in the mind, the mind is a product of the brain, and the brain is contained within the body, anything that's threatening or potentially threatening to us on any of these levels is a threat to the ego. This is why even small things can become huge problems, because the ego is fragile and weak, even though it makes itself out to be this big, bad wolf. Step out of the mind, and you'll realize that though they're pervasive in your life, Problems aren't actually a fact of life, and they're not at all indicative of the larger, greater, objective reality. They're just a filter that you've become so identified with that you never even thought to ask yourself what was outside your mind. If you like this video, then you'll probably also like the video that I'll link in the end card. It explores the role that fear plays in our life. Before you go though, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of the ego. Should we work to eliminate it or integrate and accept it? Do you think we can ever truly eliminate it or can we only work to make it as small as possible? I would love for this to be a space where we could all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you guys have to say. Also, if you like this video, then hit that like button and if you really liked it, then subscribe so you can catch all my videos as soon as I drop them. As for right now though, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I just need a way